Hello, everybody, and welcome to the AMPM podcast. My name is Manny Coates, and I will be your host. And this is the show where we discuss all things Amazon private label and how to generate recurring revenue streams 24 hours per day during the AM and the PM, hence the name of the show. Get it? AM, PM podcast. As a matter of fact, I was with friends watching this big boxing match. And while I was getting way, way, way too excited for any boxing match, I was making money. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Hey, everybody. I am here with Connor Gillivan. He's been selling in the Amazon marketplace since 2009. Really long time. And he is a CMO of freeup.com. How are you doing, Connor? Doing well. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you for coming on the show. I really do appreciate it. Um, 2009, eight years you've been selling. Is that on Amazon or is that e-commerce? That is on Amazon. Started selling on Amazon 2009 and since then branched out. I've sold a little bit through Shopify stores and have experimented with eBay and other marketplaces. But yeah, 2009 is Amazon. Cool. So um, are you still selling at this point on yeah. Amazon? Yep. Continue to sell on Amazon. Uh, the business is a dropship business model. So we work with brands located around the United States. We manage their sales on Amazon, handle all um, sales and everything through dropship relationships. Cool. So um, people always want to know, where are your sales numbers these days? Just for the sure. Amazon business. Yep. For the Amazon business, we're, we float between one and $2 million in sales per year. Um, it, it really depends on kind of how things are going, how much time we're putting into it. It isn't something that we, uh, my business owners and I focus 100% of our time on any longer. When we were putting in full-time efforts, we had gotten up to around 10 million in sales um, in, in 2014. Okay. How did you get started, by the way? I mean, 2009, uh, it's a long time ago. There's probably not a lot of training, I, I'd yeah. imagine, right? Yeah. So 2009, I was still in college and uh, my, my, my business partner who I continue to work with today, Nathan Hirsch, him and I and one other person had gotten interested in the Amazon marketplace and we saw an opportunity on campus, kind of saw this problem that, uh, you know, students were purchasing textbooks at the beginning of the semester for $200, going to the, the, um, the bookstore at the end, getting $5. So we kind of found a middle ground there. We're purchasing them for higher prices and then listing them on Amazon. And this was really around the time that Amazon's book marketplace was blowing up. Mm -hmm. And then over the following two to three years, they expanded into a bunch of other categories. And so we just followed them into those through dropship relationships. Okay. Interesting. And then, um, at some point you moved into the outsourcing, outsourcing business, freeup.com. That's with uh, three E's, I believe, right? Yep, exactly. So <laughs> we, so it's with three E's free up with two was taken. Um, and so we kind of spun it to, to make the 30 represent e-commerce. So free up your time in e-commerce. And when we were building the Amazon business in its first two to three years, we were running into a lot of issues with how much work it took to actually run the operations. And myself, my business partner, and a few other people part-time that we had hired through our college were all handling everything, but we weren't really able to focus on growth or finding new suppliers because we were just doing the orders. We were doing the customer service. We were making sure that everything in terms of the operations was happening correctly. Okay. And so we got pretty frustrated with it, and we eventually were introduced to the idea of Odesk, which is now Upwork and, um, you know, is this, this marketplace where you can hire freelancers. But we were introduced to it by another entrepreneur, and, um, and we just kind of gave it a look. We didn't really know much about it, and we started to try it out, and we failed a lot. So in the first year, we were, we were looking at the dollar price. We were hiring people for $2 an hour, and we're really excited about it, but then realizing that they weren't bringing – a high level of work to the business and we're actually creating more problems. We then went and tried to hire, you know, developers through Odesk and saw if that could work out, building different programs to automate our processes through Amazon. Again, ran into issues and through all of this we we learned a lot about the that process that you want to go through to screen a freelancer to make sure that they're going to be good to help your business grow. And so that is at the point where we said listen, we don't love posting jobs to Odesk and what became Upwork and then going through 20 to 30 applications trying to find the right one because at the end of the day, if we made a bad hire, you know, we lost all that time and money going into it. And then if we made a good hire and it worked out, we could still end up in a situation where they had to quit for whatever reason and we're back to square one. So we created free up as a marketplace to, to kind of get rid of that issue for business owners. 
So with FreeUp, we take hundreds of applications from freelancers each week. We put them through our own interview and screening process, making sure that they're good for communication, good for their skill set, have a good attitude. And then we let the top 1% into the network, and that's the pool of people that business owners are hiring from. Mm. So that's kind of the, the background, how we got into that, and how we're trying to do it a little bit differently than a lot of these other marketplaces that are more just kind of job boards. Okay, interesting. So what's a bigger business for you right now? Your Amazon business or your free up business? Um, this year, the free up business will take over as the larger business. Okay. Now you mentioned 1% um, is what you're bringing, the top 1% of the talent that's out there. How do you determine who's the top 1%? Sure. So like I said, we have our own unique interview um, and then communication testing process. So what happens is a freelancer, if they're interested in joining the network, They'll go ahead and submit our application. That's kind of the first step. They go ahead and give us um, information about their background, information about their work history, information about their experience, why they're looking to join. They also go ahead and do an internet speed test and a, a typing speed test so we can see what their levels are there as well. We, that comes in. We have a team that goes through that. And then through that, we filter out people to then go into an interview stage. So in that interview stage, again, they get talked more about their skills, their experience. We ask them specific questions to the skill set that they say they have. So if they say they're great at listing products on Amazon, we're going to try to ask them to walk us through the process of what that takes. We can tell them through the interview, are they good? Are they, um, are they going to be able to help our clients do this? And then if they pass that, they do one more stage. And we have a communications guidelines that pretty much goes through how to work with clients there, there are a lot of best practices. So it's, you know, if you're going to be late for a shift, what do you do? This is our recommendation. If you're going to have to, um, you know, take vacation, how do you handle that? There's a lot of things that go into this. So it kind of teaches them to work with clients at a high level. Because one of the biggest issues we found with outsourcing was communication. If a business owner doesn't know what their freelancer is doing, they could get frustrated and they could start to make assumptions in their heads and, and want to get rid of that person. Hmm. So, if they then pass the test on all of those guidelines, they're then allowed into our setup process and they get into the network. So that's really the, the vetting process from, you know, from the first to the end of how we bring those freelancers into our, our marketplace. Okay. Interesting. So how many freelancers do you have in your network now? Today we have around 700 freelancers that have been pre-screened and are in the network and, and working with clients. Is this all catered around e-commerce or is it for more than that? Yep. So we started mainly in e-commerce, catering to a lot of Amazon sellers, eBay sellers, people building their own Shopify stores. Mm -hmm. And we continue to have a lot of those types of clients and also freelancers. But in the past year, we have expanded into a lot of digital marketing and web development and web design because e-commerce companies also have needs for that. And we're getting a lot of requests from our clients for those types of skill sets. So okay. the, the marketplace now offers a, a wider variety of skills. Yeah, it's an interesting business model. Um, outside of yourself, how many people do you have actually working the uh, free up business? Sure. So it's, it's myself, my business partner. We both work full time. And then we have an internal team of, of freelancers as well, independent contractors who are working part time to full time. Um, and it's about 20 people now. Okay. on the internal team. So you're using your own network to actually help run this business, uh, uh, the, the whole thing. So that's cool. Yeah, okay. exactly. So, cause I haven't actually used your system yet. Um, I've been on, uh, Upwork previously Odesk forever. I've been, yep. I mean, since before anybody knew what it was, I think. And, <laughs> um, we connected, we started talking about what you do. I actually heard somebody that I, I really, uh, value almost, a, a mentor to me, uh, mentioned, mm -hmm. Um, or said really good things about your business. So I mm -hmm. wanted to have you on the show. Uh, but how does your service differ from Upwork or from online jobs, something like that where you're going out and you're hiring somebody? And I know you just went through a, a big portion of it where you're vetting stuff. Yeah. But um, are they, I guess, let me back up a little bit. Are, are we hiring individuals directly or are we hiring you? Sure. So you're hiring individuals directly. You're creating an independent contractor relationship between you as the business owner and the actual freelancer. So the marketplace just serves as a, a place to bring you two together. Um, and the way it works a little bit differently on your side. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you go to Upwork, you create a job posting 
it then gets posted to all of their freelancers, right? Yeah. Um, so freelancers can then apply. So, you know, on a daily basis, maybe over a two day process, you'll receive 10 to 15 applicants who, you know, say they have the, the qualities for the job and you can speak with them and set up interviews. So for us, if you come to free up, you create an account and then within your, your account, within the software, there's a request a worker button. So you click this button and it's a, it's a similar form to what you would post a job on other sites. It asks you the skill set you're looking for, the description of that. Uh, project that you're looking to hire for, whether you want them to be U.S. or non-U.S., what rate you're looking for, and a few other details to really give us the idea of the ideal worker that you want. And then you submit that, and usually within a day or two, within 24 hours, you're going to receive a uh, you know, notification through email and also your free up account saying, here's a worker that fits your needs. Go ahead and talk with them. Make sure they're the right fit. If they are, you can hire them directly through the free up software and you can start working with them immediately. If you don't like that first person that's introduced to you, you can click to request a new worker, give feedback for why that wasn't a great worker, mm -hmm. and then you get introduced to someone else. So the process of having to set up interviews and, and go through that whole process is, is eliminated and you're just introduced to top talent that we've already pre-screened. Okay. So are you, um, can you then pull them into Skype so you can communicate with them daily if that's your process or do you have to yep, communicate so through your system? Your, your preference, what, okay. however you want to communicate with them, you can set it up. So are they officially off your system at that point if you want to hire them full-time and make them your full-time contractor or is that, is it, does it not work that way? Gotcha. So, so yeah, so if you do hire someone through FreeUp, you, you will get billed and you pay through the FreeUp marketplace. Um, you can use a credit card, you can use ACH or also PayPal. And then if you do want to actually buy out that contractor and take them off of the marketplace, there's a buyout clause within our agreement that allows you to do that. Okay. Now, really quickly, what does the buyout clause dictate? Is it a, a certain percentage? Um, yeah, I, it's a it's a certain amount that just goes with the, the worker, depending on like the hours that you're working them. It kind of depends on each situation, but it's okay. it, it goes around. Um, we've only had it happen a few times, but um, it, it kind of is approached as it happens. Okay. How are your, uh, how, since we're hiring them through your system and you're managing the payroll essentially, um, mm -hmm. and I imagine the time tracking, everything's done through your system. Is that correct? Yep. So the software is, is built so that once you actually hire a freelancer, they get attached to your account. They have their own account as well. They can okay. punch in for you. You can see all their hours. They leave comments on their hours. You can rebut, uh, you know, rebuttal hours if you don't think they were correct. And we'll kind of help with those billing issues. Okay. And then, um, do you guys charge a fee on top of whatever was negotiated or is it all, you know, it's like, Hey, this is, this person's going to be $10 an hour and that's what you pay. Yep. Exactly what you said. $10 an hour. That's what you pay as the business owner. We take 15% out of that and then pay the rest of the freelancer. Cool. All right. And, um, is it mainly the Philippines or are you all over the place? Sure. So about 40% are Philippines, 40% are actually located in the U S and then 20% is scattered across 40 other countries around the world. Okay. How do the costs compare using your service to using online jobs or um, Upwork mm -hmm. for the uh, same, for the same job, let's say? Sure. I think it's pretty competitive. You know, maybe there's a difference within a couple dollars or so, but mm -hmm. I know Upwork's, uh, they're, they, I think they charge 20% on their projects. So we're 15% and we try to keep everything pretty, pretty adjustable to what the, the competitive market is. Okay. Can you give us some, or give the audience uh, some examples of what it might cost uh, for a typical VA that uh, an Amazon seller might use? And I know there's a lot of different things that they could be doing. Yeah, sure. So I'll, I'll also send you a, uh, we have an infographic that lays out all the different skill sets and their um, okay. estimated costs. But so it really just depends on if you're open to working with someone outside of the U.S., you're of course going to get someone cheaper. Um, and then if you're working with someone in the U.S., it's going to be a little bit more expensive. But the way we usually break it down is just into three sections. So there's a lower level, a mid-level, and an expert level. Your lower level worker may be between 5 to $15 an hour. Your mid-level is going to be 15 to 30, and then your expert is going to be 30 to 50. And it really depends on what you're looking for. So if you want someone to, let's say, help you source products that is, you know, has some experience, knows what they're doing, but you don't feel like paying as much, you could pay five to fifteen dollars an hour and hire someone to bring into your team and and get them up to speed. But if you want someone who has years of experience and knows exactly what they're doing, you don't even have to interact with them much. You're gonna you're gonna pay that mid to expert level person. So uh, all the all the pricing ranges from five to fifty dollars an hour, and then it's really up to you as the business owner to say 
you know, what level of experience do I want that person to have? Okay. All right. Cool. Does that, does that help? Yeah. It does. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, and you've got 700 people in your network out at any point, how many of them are free to hire? <laughs> that's a, that's a good question. I don't have a, an exact number, but most, most of the time, almost always we have someone available, um, for someone who makes a request. And in the rare case that we don't, mm-hmm. we also will go out and try to find someone. If you have a special request of a freelancer skill set that we don't have in the marketplace, we'll go out there, we'll put up job postings, we'll put them through our own process. If we think that they're good enough for you, we'll introduce them. You can meet with them, see if they're a good fit. If not, there's no obligation to hire them, but that is a service that we offer as well. Okay, cool. I know before we started this call, um, I sent you a, a message saying, hey, I'm looking for a couple people. Yeah. So if you can if you can hook me up with some people, I, I definitely, definitely like to check it out and then come back uh, on the show and, and talk about that experience. But cool. we have a lot of, uh, I mean, I, uh, just about everybody um, in our group, uh, the audience that's listening or watching right now, um, mm-hmm. are Amazon private label sellers. So let's talk about that. I'm going to kind of nice. give you the mic here to uh, just kind of talk about the basics and the more advanced types of people that they can hire. Because I think a lot of people don't realize what they can actually outsource. And mm-hmm. I can say that for us, we've got a new office here. Um, and we are outsourcing like crazy. We just hired a couple new people in the office. We've hired, I think, three or four new people outside the office, and we're probably going to be, you know, double, tripling That's that awesome. in the next month. So, if somebody who's starting out, um, should they outsource right away? And, and somebody who's been doing it for a little while, at what point should they start outsourcing, and who should they hire? In your yeah, opinion, definitely. That's a, that's the toughest question. And for myself, when I first got into this, it was one of the hardest hurdles to get over at first, because when you're first starting a business and, you know, I was, I was going through starting an Amazon business, there are a lot of moving pieces. So, you know, just talking about setting up processes for fulfilling orders, setting up processes for going through customer service, managing your seller metrics, all of these different pieces, you as the business owner are setting up processes and systems for them. So, you at a, a certain extent, you, you feel like you could do it the best. So you're, you're always, always trying to question yourself, you know, if I hire someone, is that going to hurt my business? Um, and, and I think that's a, a big hurdle that people have to get over. But I encourage people to start hiring or start outsourcing once their full day is filled with repetitive tasks that are pulling them away from actually growing. Um, so if you're spending the entire day, you know, you're waking up, oh, I have to do two hours of customer service. I then have to fulfill orders for two hours. I'm then going to, I'm going to list, I'm going to list some more products. Then I have to talk to my suppliers. You know, if your whole day is filled with those repetitive tasks that could be handled by someone else at a, a reasonable price, it's then time to take some things off your plate so you can stay focused on what you do best and what keeps growing the business. Got it. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, the place to start Okay. in terms of, in terms of a Amazon specific business, I think the easiest ways to start is one with customer service. Um, that's going on all day. You're receiving inquiries, depending on how large your business is, it can be very distracting. So even if you're, uh, you know, you're doing something and trying to get it done, um, and a customer inquiry comes in with a really angry customer, you might want to go answer it and it could just, it could tear your whole day apart and just make you less productive. Okay. Let me, let me ask you something about that. Um, and and I'd love for you to continue, but if we're hiring somebody for Amazon and I know a lot of people, uh, they're nervous about people logging into their system, especially, you know, a VA that has might be currently working part-time on other people's accounts. Um, do you have them go through some kind of VPS or is that something that uh, we would set up after we hire them or what, what's your thought process on that? Yeah, of course. So, uh, just as a background, like I said, I've been hiring VAs for seven years or so. I've never had issues with this, nor have any of our clients to free up, but we do have a best practices document that we give over to the client on how to actually set that person up and give them permissions within their Amazon account so that it very much limits them to the actual tasks that they'll be performing. Um, so if they're only going to be working on your inventory, only give them access to that. If they're only going to be doing orders, only give them access to that. So there are ways that you can mitigate that risk by limiting their permission. And, and we, we help you out as a marketplace to make sure that's set up correctly. Okay. So you don't have them um, go through any kind of uh, VPSs or anything like that. You just give them limited access uh, to your account, which is easy to set up. And then that's it. Just go from there. That is, yeah, I, okay. I think some clients do go through a VPS and they'll use that um, just to make sure there aren't any more issues. But uh, yeah, we, I think that that might be in the document, but it's not something that we highly recommend. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, inventory management. That's a big thing for a lot of people, right? Yeah, and they sure. hate doing it. Um, how skilled, <laughs> how skilled are the people on your network that can be hired to actually do this? And are they using any, um, services or tools, um, to actually make this happen? Yeah, of course. So a, a lot of people on the network who can handle inventory management and across different business models too. So obviously drop shipping may be your most intensive because you're depending on how many suppliers you're working with, you're receiving a lot of reports and trying to update them in bulk to the Amazon marketplace. Um, but if it's private label or if you're just doing FBA and other fashions, there are people that can help there as well. Um, they can do it at a high level. And a lot of them also know a lot of the different softwares that can integrate with Amazon because it just makes their job easier. So that's a, that's something that we encourage to them. And we partner with a lot of those, uh, those softwares too, that can help with your inventory management. So there's a lot of, uh, back and forth in terms of trying to get freelancers who know those skills too. Okay. So if a new seller, um, or relatively new, doesn't know all the software, uh, tools that are out there or services that, uh, that work with inventory management, um, mm -hmm. the, is that something you're saying that you would recommend, or is that something that this particular virtual assistant would, would actually have information on and could suggest it? Yeah, sure. So more towards the latter, right? So if you're, if you're new and um, you want to hire someone, let's say, you know, that knows a little bit more about inventory management than you and can really come in and help you set up those systems and processes, it, and it's probably going to happen that they know a software that they might recommend to you, then it's up to you as a business owner. Do I want to take on that additional monthly cost to use this software or do I just want them to set up a process right within Amazon that they can use? Okay. Product sourcing. That's a big one for, for a lot of people. Like I can't, they get stuck <laughs> finding a product. Yeah. You guys have people for that? Yep, of course. Uh, all levels. Uh, like I said, um, if you want someone who has a ton of experience in it and can really hone in on the exact product niche you're looking for, mm -hmm. you got you want to go towards the mid and expert level. But if you already have your own system in place that you know works really well and you just want someone hammering away on it day after day, mm -hmm. you could get someone more in that low level who's going to be able to maintain that for you while you're working on other things. What's the difference between a low level product sourcer and a high level product sourcer? Sure. So um, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe this. So high level workers are usually top level consultants who they either run their own agency. So they may be running an Amazon agency and one of their skills within that is actually product sourcing. Um, so they have that they've done it or they've run an Amazon business where they've done product sourcing on their own. Whereas a low level uh, product sourcer, maybe someone who let's say has one year of experience doing product sourcing for other Amazon sellers that they've worked with. So I don't know if you can see just the difference there of the expertise in terms of knowing Amazon, knowing product sourcing. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. would you say a low level person, they've never had an Amazon business, they've, but they do have some kind of experience that you, I, uh, you guys have uh, vetted them at some point to where they know, I guess to go to Alibaba or whatever site that they're going to, and there's basic criteria that they they follow or, or is a low level person really going to be somebody that just knows about Alibaba, but you really got to go through and hold their hand on everything. Gotcha. Uh, the first thing that you said, so they'll have some experience with it. They'll have worked with other sellers who do it. Okay. Um, but it's, it's, it's encouraged that if you have your own system or process, mm -hmm. you kind of walk them through that so they can use that as well. Okay. So, um, product listing, um, optimization or writing, uh, the listings, the bullets, all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And, and we can actually go into, um, SEO or article writing yeah. or anything like that. I've always found that to be troublesome when, when outsourcing, especially if it's um, outside mm -hmm. of the U.S. because even though they might be very, they, they might write very well, um, very good, you see? I even I'm messing up. <laughs> uh, no, but they, you're just reading through it and it, um, it just, there's, it's off, right? You can just feel it, yeah. Yeah, I know yeah. Uh, do you, I mean, how do you handle that? How do you handle that with your service? Is there a way to, to mitigate that? Um, yeah, I mean, for that specific one, I, I, I personally think using someone who who's like first native language is English is the best for for that type of job. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if there's a way to mitigate it necessarily, but we do monitor a lot and we take a lot of feedback from clients who are hiring people for that specific skill set. Mm -hmm. So if someone like let's say you hired someone like that and you you just came back and you said, I, I don't I can't really put a finger on it, but I can just tell like it's not. Um, it's not that perfect English that I'm looking for that I know is going to really help my SEO. We can take that feedback and, and make sure that, you know, maybe that person isn't prioritized for those types of projects. And, and we make sure that those ones that do have that really good English are, are prioritized for those. 
Okay. What if I, uh, what if I want somebody that's going to go through my metrics and just tell me where there's holes and where there's mistakes yep. and where I can clean things up? What, what is somebody, is that going to be in the higher level, um, tier? Or yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. That's usually going to be mid to, to high. Um, cause they'll have a, a good amount of experience with Amazon and just actually managing Amazon accounts as a whole. Mm-hmm. They'll also know Amazon's policies really well. So they'll be able to go into your seller metrics, you know, look at everything, your order defect rate, your cancellation rate, your late shipment, your refunds, your, um, you know, how fast do you respond to customers, everything that Amazon keeps coming up with. And they're going to have ways that they know how to manage it mm-hmm. and keep you up to date on how things are going, give you advice on, you know, Hey, you marked too many orders as late recently. You need to really focus on that so that that doesn't become an issue. And um, I think that's a huge one because Amazon suspends people really quickly based off of their metrics. So if you're not taking the time to actually monitor it, it can become a big issue for your business. Okay. Is it uh, reasonable to be able to hire people that are doing this, whether it's PPC or the metrics or product listings or sourcing um, Mm -hmm. for 500 to a thousand dollars per month? Or is that uh, on the low end? Um, it's tough to say. So we, everything's hourly for us. So I'd have to like compute okay. it really quickly. Um, yeah, the reason yeah. I ask is I know that, um, uh, you know, when using a couple of the other big sites, that's kind of where, where it seems to fall for us, it's right around that thousand dollars or a little bit lower depending on the skill set. And we've gone, okay. obviously we've gone higher, but I'm just trying to think. So if you hired, you know, you could hire Are you five. Are thinking full time? Yeah, or? full time. Let's say you hired five I and mean, you're pretty, you're, you're, we're going to assume that you're selling pretty well now and you hire five people to handle different yeah. things. Maybe that's overkill, but you might be able to do that for $5,000 a month or less. Um, mm-hmm. I would imagine at that point when you have that many people, is it, do you, should you hire like a manager via, <laughs> or, of, you know, somebody from, the, from your company that actually manages them all? Yeah. So first the, the dollar amount does sound reasonable. I just kind of ran it in terms of like hours. Um, mm-hmm. It sounds reasonable for our hourly rates. And then, yeah, it, it is smart sometimes to, if you have over five freelancers, usually you could get someone to come in and actually manage them for you. So they're kind of directly reporting to that, that remote manager. And then that person is the one that's relaying the message to you mm-hmm. and you can kind of manage it in that way. Because if you, if you do have just, let's say five, 10 freelancers that are working for you and reporting to you every day, it can become a little bit overwhelming to manage them if that's not something you're used to. So a remote manager can be helpful. Awesome. I, I think I'm going to send you like a list of five different people we need right now. As soon as we're done with this call. Please <laughs> yeah, I, w- I want to definitely check it out. Like I said, I've heard good things. Um, yeah, I, I think I've asked most of the questions that I, I had. Um, is there anything that uh, that you want to talk about that we haven't gone over yet? Um, just a little bit of advice for people if they're if they're just getting into outsourcing. My advice is always just to start slow. So if you're looking to get into this, but you're a little hesitant, um, I would recommend if you're, let, let's just use customer service as an example, split it up into maybe three shifts over the day. Maybe you hire someone to fill that shift for one hour. So that's, it's only three hours each day. You hire someone for a reasonable rate. You see how they do in, in managing your customer service, maybe just your emails on that level. And then you go from there, you know, that's three hours that you freed up for your own time in the day. And then you move on to the next one. Um, so that's always my advice for people who, may seem overwhelmed at first by the whole idea of outsourcing. Okay. That's a great point that you bring up. Um, and I do have a question about that time zones. That's one of our biggest hiccups is when we're talking to mm-hmm. people. And for example, if we're, we have a social media manager, um, we want to have some kind of crossover. We're here in California and we're like, we want to yep. talk to you like we're doing right now live, uh, for at least an hour a, a day. Um, mm-hmm. but that means if they're in the Philippines, for example, you know, they're coming on at crazy hours in order to do that. Yep. Um, what, what is your, advice on somebody that wants to have at least a little bit of crossover. Is that difficult to do? Um, no. So especially, well, especially through us, if you tell us that you only want someone to work for from nine to five, you know, standard Eastern time in the U S only freelancers that have that available and can work on those times will, will introduce themselves to you. Um, so I mean, yeah, I, I think Filipinos too are just so used to working with companies in the States and different time zones that they're working on all sorts of different, um, times within their given day. So it's really just finding that right person who you can work with. Okay, great. And yeah. do you, do you find, is it more expensive to hire somebody to work uh, an odd shift versus somebody during the typical nine to five here in the U S? Um, no, I have not found that to be an issue. It's the same. Okay, yep. great. Now this has been really good advice. So, um, I, I 100% agree. And I wish I would have done this in the beginning when I first started. Um, I've been doing this for just over a year and a half now. 
And I wish I would have hired like a uh, some kind of a VA to at least handle the customer service portion of it, the emails, yeah. the, the any calls that were coming in for for the podcast stuff that we were doing, um, mm -hmm. returns, refunds. Um, for the longest yeah. time, I didn't know that I was had to respond within 24 hours to customer <laughs> emails. <laughs> yeah. I, I let that go for for a long time. So that would be like. I think the first thing to for, for people to do, and if you can hire somebody for five bucks an hour um, mm -hmm. to do that, you know, I think everybody's time, if you're doing this business is worth more than $5 an hour and, and if that can free up half your day, you know, Definitely. why not do it? It'd be absolutely yeah. great. So um, yeah, that's all I've got. I, I think it's been cool. fantastic. So if people want to find out more, they're going to go to freeup.com. That's with three E's. And um, yeah. is there a fee to actually sign up or is it... Uh, I know one of the services charges uh, a fee to actually get going. So there's no fee to create an account and request your first worker. You're mm -hmm. only charged when you actually, when the worker actually bills hours. And um, if, if anyone does sign up from listening to this podcast, tell them to or mention your name, mention this podcast and they'll receive a dollar off their first worker that they hire forever. Okay. All right, cool. And um, I'll tag you in the uh, video when it's posted in the podcast. Um, but outside of that is if somebody wants to get a hold of you or reach out to you, what's the best way of doing that? Sure. Best way to reach me is just Connor, C-O-N-N-O-R at freeup.com. And you can also go to freeup.com website and set up a phone call with myself or my business partner at any time. We love speaking with potential clients who might be looking to outsource and can answer any questions that you have. Awesome. So guys, Connor Gillivan, he, uh, it looks like he's crushed it as an Amazon seller. He's now doing really well with free up and, uh, he's passing this on to you guys to actually, uh, reduce your stress levels, give you more time back and, uh, actually grow your business. So, uh, check them out at freeup.com. Connor, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And, um, I'm going to reach out to you and then we're going to have you back on the show and talk about the results. Awesome. That sounds great. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Take we'll it easy. You've been listening to the AM PM podcast hosted by Manny Coates. For more information, insider, insider tools, tools, and to get the resources mentioned in this episode, visit ampmpodcast.com.